<laughs> All right, so uh, next up, we have Chris Campbell. He's going to be talking about PowerShell and creating bots. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris. What's up, guys? What's up? So uh, this whole talk is basically uh, settling an argument that I had with somebody. Uh, this slides are available already online, and all the code is uh, already released on GitHub. Uh, I also want to do this up front, since I'm going to run out of time. Uh, I want to give credit to all the people that helped me. Um, I want to give credit to Chris Gates for telling me to get off my ass and submit to comments. Um, and people like Joe McRae that are focused on helping the community and uh, not just looking cool. Uh, I also want to thank the people that argued with me. So this is who I am. I currently work for Harris as a security researcher. I used to work on a DoD red team for a couple of years. Uh, prior to that, I was a Windows admin. I contribute to a cool open source uh, PowerShell um, project called PowerSploit, and there's my Twitter and blog. Quick disclaimer. Everybody got that? Probably don't even know what I'm talking about. All right, so I was having a discussion with a pretty hot security department. They, uh, they whitelist all binaries. They prevent all static outbound connections. They investigate every strange connection that goes on on the network. They proxy all web traffic. And they have a huge security budget. But one of their guys was very, very confident. Um, he doesn't care about exploitation because uh, they can't get code execution in his mind. Uh, so I was actually surfing the internet trying to find examples of this kind of defensive arrogance, uh, hubris, and I found this one, which is pretty classic. Uh, apparently he makes red teams useless. <laughs> so I thought in my mind, all right, how, how can I do this? Uh, how, how do I bypass all the security protections that they have? And I, I came up with a pretty solid example, I thought, um, and his response was, because I was using Metasploit, uh, you know, if HD didn't release that tool, essentially, there's no way you'd be able to get in. If you had to write that stuff yourself, you'd be screwed, which is a pretty terrible argument. But. All right, so I had to find some requirements before I started writing this up. Uh, it was going to be client-side delivered. Uh, I need to be C2 without any infrastructure. So basically, I was on the spot right then. Within an hour or two, I was trying to put together a proof of concept of what I was saying so that I could win an argument. Uh, <laughs> it had to bypass the application whitelisting. There was a great talk on that last year. Uh, so PowerShell was one of the ways you can do that. Um, and it had to be simple enough for me to use only uh, tools that they already had in place. So I came up with this plan. So they're on, running Windows 7. Uh, they have their web proxy and their IPSs and all that stuff. Uh, I'm going to use Twitter and Pastebin um, and Tor and Google to do all my C2, and I'm going to just push down a, uh, essentially a macro that's going to run PowerShell that will live persistently in their enterprise. So uh, I had to build a macro, um, and that's everything I discovered. Uh, the other thing that's interesting, I'll throw some code up here in a minute. Uh, there's no way I have time to go through it in 15 minutes, but if you want to look at the slides later, it will give you some uh, clues to what I was talking about. So I get asked this a lot, like why are you so focused on PowerShell? Um, well, it's awesome because it's there already. You don't have to uh, statically compile you know, Python libraries and make this huge uh, executable like was discussed in the previous talk. When this stuff is already there, it's much easier to, uh, to deliver. All right, so like my pseudo logic, we want to run checks to see what time it is. Uh, make sure that it's during the work hours, so that we're not weakening off hours, because they were very, uh, very keen on, on checking that stuff. Uh, we need to use the proper user agent strings, because they look at that stuff, um, and need to authenticate sometimes to the proxy if necessary. Um, just pull down, pull down a command from a Twitter account and execute it, is essentially all I wanted to do, and do that until a kill date. If you've never used PowerShell before, it comes with an integrated scripting environment, uh, ISE. So if you just type ISE uh, from PowerShell, you will get a full-blown uh, development environment, which actually
actually is as good as the commercial stuff that you have to pay for. So Twitter makes this really easy with their V1 API, which is still active. Uh, it returns an XML page that you can parse and pull out. Uh, there, the text is uh, bang thunderstruck. Uh, PowerShell is really easy. Uh, does a really good job of parsing XML. So this is the entire uh, end of the argument. This was the winning moment. Uh, this is the proof of concept. That's all of it. That pulls down a uh, tweet and ran it against their end uh, posts. And it was actually really easy. It takes about 45 minutes for me to look up some of the stuff. Uh, but I need to add some smarter logic to bypass their network defenses. I you know, I'm a pen tester, I'm not a malware writer, so pen tests had uh, finite times, so I need to put in a kill date to make sure that none of my code executes uh, beyond that time. So that, that's what that is. Uh, need to check to make sure that it's starting to work hours. That's what that was. Uh, this is a lot of logic, and you probably can't read that at all. Um, but we, we need to prevent Stuxnet type stupidity. Check to make sure that their IP addresses are the ones that we're targeting, and make sure that it doesn't uh, go beyond that. Need to grab the user agent proxy settings out of the registry and uh, use them. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, there's a get random command line within PowerShell, which will do some things. If you just give it some values, it'll pseudo randomly grab one of those values. So here we just give it some times to wait to, to just do a little, you know, don't check Twitter for this number of seconds, just chill out. And you could keep adding as many to that array as you want. Um, and that made this whole thing quasi stealthy, such that the finished product was able to run on their network. Uh, and there was there were some issues that they were able to write signatures for it, but uh, originally it, they would not have seen it. All right, so now let's get to the fun part. We need to host the scripts. We need to put the entire script up on, uh, you know, your choice, whatever you want to do, PageBank, GitHub, Google Chrome. Uh, shorten the link. Uh, there's some logic in there to, to follow the redirects. Uh, and then we're just going to create like a stub, which is the, that IEX, which is an alias for an invoked expression. It's going to use the .NET web client object to download the script and then pass it to invoke your expression. So it's just going to download the entire script and execute it in memory with that one line. That's all you have to run uh, from a PowerShell prompt to do that. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is move it so we're not going to run it from a PowerShell prompt. We're going to run it from cmd.exe. So we have to encode it. So the second window is encoding it with a little trick that Lee Holmes uh, put out on Twitter. And then that uh, bottom, the command prompt window is what we're actually going to execute. So we're going to call PowerShell. We're going to tell it to bypass its own execution policy. We're going to encode. We're going to do no logo and hidden. And we're going to encode the entire script into a string. We drop that right there. It will call out, download your PowerShell script, and execute it. All right, so now we need to build a payroll, uh, payroll a uh, payload to deliver to them. So one of the first tricks that uh, so one of the first tricks I learned as a pen tester is to send uh, send macros. It still works to this day. You can send uh, an Excel spreadsheet that's a payroll calendar with an evil macro, and people will click it. But instead of you know writing out the binary to disk and execute it like most of the things do, we can just add in right there the PowerShell call and just run it directly from the macro and run everything in memory in a separate thread. So even if they immediately close Excel, you're still running. So uh, we got to get them to open, we got to get them to enable macros. So one of the tricks that uh, I was taught is to put up a uh, put two pages. Put the actual content, hide the actual content, which is what we were doing on the, the previous uh, slide. We're actually doing an auto open. So we're hiding the payroll calendar, or putting this screen up. <laughs> That's legit, right? You put it on. So now that they, uh, we've got a payload that works, that pulls down our email script and runs it, we need to send it. So you can actually uh, do that through PowerShell. 
So send phishing is a script I wrote that, that basically ignores authentication. So you could do from inside uh, an enterprise, you can connect to an exchange server, say you're anybody on, so say you're the CEO. So the, this is more of like a post-exploitation type thing. You can, once you get a shelf on the inside, you can impersonate any other user easily uh, connecting to Exchange and sending it out. All right, that's on GitHub as well. All right, so all we're doing right now is just tweeting commands and it's running it for us. Uh, we want to do cooler stuff than that. So a uh, coworker was like, hey, we should delimit it with a uh, pipe. So, so I used pipe as a delimiter. Um, and then just because it, a tool that I used to use had uh, the exclamation points before all commands, that's what I decided to go with. So I created some maintenance commands. Uh, bank persist will drop a, a link in either the all user startup if you're admin or the local user startup, which has that stub in it. So it's going to automatically execute uh, the entire script again uh, when they log in. Bank quit will just tell it to, to, to exit. Bank sleep, if you want to put to sleep you know, over the weekend. Um, bank change, so if you want to give control of your botnet to Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, bang run is the original command. It'll run at uh, any command uh, through command.exe. Bang download will download a file to the box. That uh, that image is downloading Netcat from Hack Armory, which is a really cool site that, that hosts a lot of pen test tools uh, to temp SVC host.exe. Bang upload uploads a file to uh, it says filebin. I just have to change it because the guy that runs filebin.ca changed his API or it just stopped working. So right now it's actually using his pastebin.ca and uh, so it, it'll uh, encode it, A64, and throw the file and put it up on uh, pastebin. Down exec uh, downloads PowerShell scripts, so you just host it on GitHub or whatever, or on uh, pastebin and pull it down and execute it. <coughs> So we do some post exploitation commands. Bang screenshot, we'll use PowerShell and .NET to save uh, a screenshot uh, uh, system. Bang packet capture, this is pretty cool. Uh, Windows 7 and newer. NetSH actually has a trace command that allows you to do full uh, cat packages. You can do an entire uh, capture from a Windows box without installing any uh, drivers, any other tools. So that's implemented there. Um, if, if you take nothing else out of it, that's probably one of the coolest things that's in here. Bank keylog, I wrote a new keylogger, two minutes. All right. Bank get system, uses uh, admin rights to grab all the system privileges. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. All right, bank credential prompts the user to enter in their credits and then saves it in plain text. <laughs> <laughs> Bang Elevate uh, will download the script and do a run as, so they'll get the UAC prompt and then they'll run your second script. Uh, and then let's have some fun. Uh, not really valid pen test stuff, but Bang Speak will do text to speech. I'll turn the volume up. <laughs> bang Pop Up will send a pop up. So if you want to preface your UAC with some, uh, if you want to set the hook on that, you can. Uh, bang Icon will drop something at the Icon screen with the flag AD. Uh, bang wallpaper, <laughs> changes the desktop wallpaper to whatever you want, you know, your own, whatever. Bang rig roll will open IE, which is, you know, that's clever, but let's add some APT features. So the bang thunderstruck command. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Um, uh, I asked on Twitter, hey, does anyone know how to hold the volume key down? And by putting the send key char 175, you're holding down volume up. There's really nothing they can do. They can't stop this. <laughs> <laughs> so for three minutes, their volume will be pretty blast. And uh, it's actually a hidden uh, IE com object in the background <coughs> that's playing uh, Thunderstruck. <laughs> uh, Dave Kennedy and Josh Kelly released a uh, Primitive bind shell and PowerShell, so I implemented that. Uh, they did that a couple years ago at DEF CON. And then one of the really cool features that's uh, that's in here is bang shell will actually kick you off of um, interpreter HTTPS shell. It's going to download uh, Mac Ravers and hook shell code scripts and append the appropriate commands for that host. 
And so if you have like this spread out in an enterprise, you can get shells immediately to all of, all of them. So we're able to build a persistent bot using all built-in tools, it's somewhat stealthy. Uh, I plan on fixing, I had a bank propagate, which actually would use the current thread to move out. Um, so I, I plan on fixing that so that it works with, uh, with not just domain admin, and maybe build a, a builder with that. That's all I got. Uh, he has not even seen this, so I'm going to send him a link. Uh, thanks, Iron Geek, for, for video taking this. I'm going to send him a link. And, uh, <laughs> you think you want to say to him right now? What's that? Do you think you want to say to him right now? Yeah. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs>